belly full, ladder empty. Best way to start any journey. So here we are again, the same old story. Forgot I turned the I turn I used this button last time. You have to reset it apparently. So there it is. And it's cooled down. And it's time to depart. Fuck you, Bixby. I don't want you. God, I fucking hate that Bixby button. Oh, my God. This is not the kind of stuff that this bike really enjoys. Riding through town. I mean, here I am doing 50 miles an hour in second gear. I mean, it's so tall, so tall. So far, my biggest gripe about this bike, other than the uh, little interlude that I'd covered, uh, hopefully I added that in there. Hey guys, I'm sorry I'm uh, floating you around with my phone at the moment. I just uh, stopped to get a bite to eat and had the first mishap on my 100 mile RSV4 RR as you can see. I was looking at the bike and I noticed um, I noticed a bunch of like spatter marks on the exhaust. You can still see this spatter mark here and it was just kind of all over the the exhaust and I'm like what the hell is that like what is causing that and then I noticed a bunch of oil was seeped around the filler cap here but you could see like liquid oil just in these cracks here or these crevices and so I twisted on the cap or I tried to twist the cap and sure enough it was just loose it was like it wasn't like coming off or anything, but it was like, this is tight. Like I've tightened it up, of course, but it, like I turned it and it just turned. Like it wasn't not, it was not tightened down at all. It just sprayed it all over the, the exhaust there. So I think I've got it cleaned up. I think I've got it, everything tightened down. Definitely something that should have been picked up on the pre-delivery inspection, so. I might have to mention that the next time I go to the dealership, but I checked the oil level. Unfortunately, this bike does not have a sight glass. It's got a freaking dipstick down there. So you can't just look and see what your oil level is. You have to use the dipstick, which definitely is not what I'm used to or not what I like on a motorcycle, but just something to be aware of. When you first get a bike like this, just go by and make sure all your little caps and stuff are tight something I should have done but something that I didn't just didn't even think about and she sure is sexy I didn't really lose much oil I mean it's still full back to the regularly scheduled moto vlog I mentioned while I stopped that the bike apparently had a loose oil cap and that caused some oil to fling out and get all over the exhaust. I did check it. I checked the level about 15 times after that because I was like, oh my god. And then at first I forgot, of course, that it's on the side stand. So I pulled the dipstick out and it was completely dry. And I'm like, oh shit. Then I remembered, oh yeah, the, the bike needs to be you know, straight up and down level 
to check the oil. So when I did that, like I had the sun just shining directly down, so I couldn't even really tell because the engine oil is so new, because the bike is brand new, it's like almost completely clear. It's like water. So I couldn't really tell where the hell it was coming up to. I'm looking and I was like, ah, I don't know, is that is that in the is that maximum or is that minimum? I can't tell. So I checked it like 15 times. I'm I'd say about 99% sure that everything's fine. I tightened everything down. And I don't know, we'll see. Right now I am playing the Let's Avoid the Thunderstorms game. I'm playing hide and seek. I'm playing hide and seek with a shit ton of thunderstorms that are coming this way. Of because of course. Because South Georgia. As you can see, it's fairly nice up this way, but then behind me south, it's getting pretty dark, so we'll see if this maneuver works. If so, awesome. If not, then well, I'm going to get a little wet, I guess. Another observation about the quick shifter is it is really, really smooth. I mean, it works great. And it even works like at just partial throttle. It works at low speeds, but I have noticed that every now and then a low speed change, either up or down, especially if you're not really getting on it or you're not really braking, can be a little chunky. It's not very often, just just every one shift out of 10 or 15. Just a little bit clunkier. Not even remotely bad, just not as smooth as it normally is. Normally, you don't even really feel it. But it just goes back to what I've been saying about this bike. It doesn't like to go slow. But then, you, then that sound hits you and you're like, fuck it. Damn it. This thing is beast. Beast mode. That sound is addicting. Still just trying to do my run in. So many people that I see on YouTube and whatnot, bitch and whine and moan about, oh my God, it's gonna take forever to get to 600 miles. How am I ever, God, how am I gonna wait so long to get to the, the break-in over with? It's gonna take forever to get, I mean, I'm at 100 and, I should have gotten gas, shit. I'm at 121 miles now, and I've just been riding this bike for a couple hours. I mean, it's still brand new. I just picked it up yesterday. Gaslight coming on there. I mean, 122 miles and the gas light's on. So, yeah. Maybe fuel economy isn't its strong suit. Oh, that's neat. I don't know if that's a feature or not. I'm going to have to look that up. But if you look there, I didn't do anything. When, once the fuel light came on, I started, I was like, oh, I need to figure out where my trip meter is because that's how I usually, that's how I've always dealt with bikes that don't have fuel, fuel gauges is I always just set my trip meter when I fill up. And I just realized I never even thought about how to, how to reset and how to find my trip meter so I'm, I start thumbing through like this little menu here and it says trip F and it's obviously like just reset so I'm thinking that it actually does that 
when the fuel gauge comes on, it sets a trip meter for you so that you know exactly how many miles you've gone on the fuel light. That is pretty interesting. I've never seen that feature in a car or a bike. The only problem with that is I have no idea like how big my reserve is. I'm, I'm guessing it's at least a gallon. And I've only got eight miles to go to the next town, so I'll probably just take it easy here. Are you guys seeing this? It's like blue sky. How, where the hell is this rain coming from? What the? F oh man. Yeah, that's that's straight up rain there. That's like real rain with a blue sky. I fucking hate this time of year. I really do. Fucking summer sucks. Don't let anybody tell you different. Summer is bullshit. It's hot as fuck. It just randomly thunderstorms every day. Literally, if you live in the south and you look at the weather channel any day between June and September, and I can guarantee you every single day is going to be thunderstorms. And it's just like that. I mean, that's like, that was some fucking quarter size raindrops just bombing me for about half a mile and then it's just sunny again. I think fuck that shit. That is such bullshit. Everything is kind of new to me here. Including that noise. I could listen to that freaking noise all day and never tire of it. And you know what's funny is that I never really considered myself much of a, like you know, a lot of these European bike snobs or Ducati snobs just go on and on and on about how Ducati sound or even how Aprilia sound. And Aprilia's are the best sounding bikes and they kind of talk down on the inline four bikes. I've always loved the shriek of an inline four. So I'm not one of those elitists that's like, oh, it's got to be a V4, or oh, it's got to be a V-twin. I love the shriek of an inline four, especially at 15, 16,000 RPM. And it sounds like a fucking Formula One car. But I have to admit, the V-twin and V4 snobs, they're fucking right. The sound of this V4 is just astounding. It's not just a sound, it's... And like just little blips of the throttle, you know, when you're just rolling through a parking lot or something, you just blip the throttle and everybody's looking at you, they're breaking their necks trying to, what the hell is that? Because it just sounds so unique. But at the same time, like, ballsy as shit. This bike is just so bipolar. When you look at it, it's small and curvy and petite. It really, it really makes you think of a, like a supermodel, like a really, really beautiful woman. But then when you rev on it and you hear the fucking balls in it, you're like, oh my God. So obviously I'm going to try to get some gas here. Now this is the first fuel fill up and I've heard the horror stories about this bike. And I can see why. That is a tiny opening. And of course, gotta go with the 93 octane. None of that 
weak sauce. And I would call that up to the brim. I think uh, that guy right there thinks that I'm talking to myself. I was told by the dealer to always wait until the display screen comes on there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not neutral. Ah. I was starting to freak out. Fine, we'll play your game. I don't even know what the hell town this is. But I'm about to be out of it, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Fucking hell. But yeah, I gotta remember that around these little towns like this, there are gonna be cops everywhere. Because rural Georgia. trying to figure out what, how in the hell the shift light's coming on at only 110 miles an hour. I thought I was in sixth gear. No, nope, this is fourth. Gear changes are super smooth at the upper rev range. Well, not upper rev range. I haven't pushed 10,000 RPMs yet. The shift lights are set for 10,000, so I have a pretty good idea of when I'm getting close to 10,000. And it just blows my mind to think about the fact that I still have 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, up to 14,000 RPM red line. Like, how fucking mental is that? I've only felt up to 10, and at 10, it feels like it's about to take off. So, I, I, I'm, oh, I'm so tempted just to do it, just to do a full on 13, 14,000 RPM. But no, no. Bike still only has 143 miles on it. No, it doesn't matter that I don't know where I am because Google knows where I am. That is so cool though, you can use the quick shifter even when you're just cruising. Like even when you're just going along at 60, 70 miles an hour and you're just wanting to shift up, you can just use it and it works fine. Quick shifter into first smooth as butter thank goodness for steering dampers Front wheel definitely came up there. 
and I wasn't uh, I wasn't prepared for it. That uh, that was a little interesting. I, the front wheel came up and the handlebars kind of turned to the side a little bit because I wasn't ready for it to come up, and then I guess the wheelie control brought it back down and there was just a, the tiniest little wiggle and then it was just perfectly fine. First gear is no joke on this bike. It is so fucking quick. I mean, these are just fourth gear pulls. Like, I, I'm not even going full throttle. It gets up to 100 so fast and so easily. I've seen several Matic magazine articles that did dyno runs on it. And the power is anywhere from 175 to 180 at the wheel. That's that's significant. And there's just there is nothing wrong with that amount of horsepower. My ninja is more like 112, 115 at the wheel. So anything that's 60 to 65, anything that's 60 to 65 horsepower more than my 636 is crazy. I think this is where I wanted to go. This is the kind of bike that can get you into so much fucking trouble. Oh my god, it really is. That's a quick 130. I mean, it's effortless. Effortless. That's, uh, this is such an amazing machine. I mentioned Muscle Biker earlier and he was a big inspiration for me going with the RSV4. And as beautiful as the farm country of southern Georgia is, I am so jealous of his location. Getting to ride 
in Utah with those beautiful mountains, mountain roads. He is so lucky. I knew if I was going east or west or north or what the hell I'm doing here. Because it looks like I'm just going straight into the shit here. None of this looks good. None of this looks promising at all. And the thing about it is, let me explain. I'm, I don't mind riding in rain. I really don't. But, I don't like thunderstorms. Now, I can't think of a worse way to die than riding a motorcycle into a thunderstorm and getting struck by lightning while you're doing like 80 on a motorcycle. I read a news story that, that happened to a guy not far from, I mean it was in Florida, but not too far from where I live. And a fucking bolt of lightning just took him right in the helmet. Dead. That's, I don't want to get struck by lightning. I really don't. I don't want to wreck my bike, but I really super don't want to get struck by lightning. I think that's just, I'm terrified of lightning. That doesn't look very inviting. That looks like a big ass fucking storm that's warning me to stay the hell away from it. And I want to. I want to stay away from it, but I have to get back home, and home is like sort of that way. So what I'm basically trying to say is my choice of day to ride my brand new bike was not ideal. Quick shifter. Quick shifter into first. Oh, it's like butter. What the hell road is that? 46? I feel like that's the road I need to be on. So now I'm going I don't know where the hell I'm going, east maybe? Oh, good. I mean, it's just turn right into the fucking rain. Somehow. I don't even know why I'm talking anymore on this motovlog. I'm gonna be cutting all this shit out. You guys don't care about the fucking rain. This vlog is really just for my personal enjoyment now at this point anyway. But it's going to be nice like years and years from now, long after this bike is gone. You know, it, it, it's going to be nice to have this video to remember this bike by and, and how I felt. And what an awesome day it was when I first rode it. Even though I was playing hide and seek with a massive line of thunderstorms trying to get home. You know, I'll be able to watch this video 10 years from now and remember what it was like when I got this bike and how it made me feel. And that's something of value whether or not I even put it on YouTube. It's clearly raining up ahead, but it doesn't look like it's, doesn't look like that. That looks like something I don't want to mess around with on a motorcycle. It's at times like these that I wish I had my car. 
Because in the car, then I could just, I mean, I wouldn't even care. But on a motorcycle, you have to think about these sort of things. Quick shifter, quick shifter. You guys are probably sick of hearing me say that, but I'm gonna keep saying it because I love to. Oh, this isn't looking good. I'll be back. Shit, man, I just got dumped on. So, Thunderstorms 1, Megatech PC, mill. Just absolutely surrounded. And so, yeah, I just got hit by a little bit of rain. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a terrible thunderstorm or anything, but, um, it was significantly raining at that gas station that I stopped at. So that's why I didn't bother to start the camera because I was kind of in a hurry. I was getting just absolutely dumped on. See that little window right there in front of me? That's what I need to hit. It's open. It's open right now. If I can get there. So, about that break-in period. It's, uh, it's not going to take long. The thing that sucks about the rain is that I wanted to check the uh, oil cap situation. But because it started pouring down rain while I was in the store and I was in a hurry to get the hell out of there, I didn't, I couldn't stop and check it. You know, obviously it was pouring down rain so there was water everywhere. So I wouldn't have been able to see any oil spots anyway. So now that it's dried off, I mean mostly dried off, you can see I'm, my back is soaked. This bike has such a tiny tail on it. This, the tail of this bike is so small that there's no protection from, you know, rain or water off the rear tire just spinning up and hitting you in the back. So, yeah, my back is soaked, my ass is soaked. But a couple of trips to uh, 130 miles an hour dry a bike off real quick. Quick shifter is going to change my life. Like, honestly. If you've never tried a quick shifter, and I'm one of those guys, before today, before this day, I had never used a quick shifter in my life. So I know exactly, like, if you've never used a quick shifter before, I can tell you exactly what it's like to use your first quick shifter. And it's insane. It's that good. It really is incredible. Especially like, you know, up, quick shift up, up shifts is, is great. Now having the auto blipper uh, so you can downshift is just next level. I kind of, I've been really shitty about this ride. Like I was supposed to be talking about the bike and I was there for the first part of the video but I kind of got off on a tangent. I, I'm going to go ahead and make a few other observations or point out some, some things that I've noticed about the bike. So the comfort is great but there's a lot of vibration in the handlebars just as much if not more as my Ninja. So if you're, you know, looking to buy a leader bike because you think it's not going to be as buzzy and it's not going to make your hands go numb, well, it's not this bike because this bike is doing the exact same thing my Ninja does. It's no worse, really. 
I don't think it's worse. I think it's about comparable. I will say this though, as heavy as this bike is, and I've felt the weight pushing it around in my garage, so I know it's it's at least 40 pounds heavier than my Ninja. I honestly feel like this thing turns in quicker. I, and I don't I don't understand it because I don't see how that's possible. But this thing, I mean, is it's incredible. Like it is really, really nimble. And it feels so planted. I could see how people could get in trouble with a bike like this. I could see how I could get in trouble with a bike like this. Because it's so good that it could make you feel overconfident. Like, just having ridden this thing for a few hours today, the very first time I've ever been on it, I already feel like street Rossi. Even though I know, cognitively I know that I'm not, and I don't have anywhere near the same stratosphere of skill level as this bike uh, can handle but it makes me feel like I do which I guess is a bit dangerous 